Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Beef Brody Podcast. This is episode four. Uh, today, I have with me none other than the one and only Man Spot, Mr. Von Nivell. Um, in this episode, we talk about all kinds of stuff, tactics on Instagram uh, and Facebook, viral videos, website, strategy, uh, marketing funnels. Uh, being an influencer. Being an influencer primarily and what that's like for a guy like Vaughn and uh, who he is, how he's gotten here and things like that. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Sorry about all the tape noise in the background. The guys, uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to run a business here. Fulfilling Amazon. <laughs> enjoy the show, guys. You guys, I am so excited to have my good friend Vaughn on the show, aka The Man Spot, if you're not familiar. Uh, Vaughn, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, why don't you tell these folks uh, a little bit about yourself? Uh, most of them probably don't know who you are. Uh, so let's kind of jump into that. We'll just jump right into it. Yeah, if you don't know who I am, um, my name is Vaughn Neville. Uh, known as, as Beef said, the man spot. I'm a creator and uh, mainly content creation is the name of my game. I'm a marketer for several different companies online, mainly within the gun community. And uh, I'm branching out a little bit now more into the car community, but it's still the same. Content is king and it's just trying to be entertaining, funny, and uh, keep people engaged with what I do and my lifestyle and uh, involving my family. Cool. Uh, what he's not mentioning is that he's got a massive audience. Uh, he's he's got nearly half a million followers on Instagram. You're like hundreds of thousands on Facebook. Yep, what four hundred thousand or something yep, on Facebook. Four hundred thousand. Yep. And YouTube, he's got some audience there, which isn't your primary focus. Which I know at one time that was like kind of your initial thought. It was back in the day, and then uh, it, it kind of took another path, which is totally cool. But uh, you still post videos there, and they still get lots of views. Uh, so anyways, so you can find him on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, we can talk about more about that later. But uh, what's really interesting, what you just said is, you know, a lot of times people classify you as an influencer. And you probably refer to yourself a lot that way because that's easiest for people to identify what you're up to and an easy way to explain yourself a lot of times. And I would be willing to bet that you probably don't like even labeling yourself as an influencer. Correct but more of a content creator and a marketer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's a very uh, special way to think of it as a marketer uh, because what you do, and like you said, it's keeping people engaged and people entertained. What The reason he was able to build such a big audience is by creating entertaining content um, that they got people engaged, mm -hmm. you know, and I tell people all the time, like when people start creating content for their brands and, uh, you know, the, there's the three E's that I try to stick to when I create content, it's entertainment, education, or escapism, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of, and, I, and I've always tried to live by that. Like I'm either, especially through the beef brand, you know, mm -hmm. as I'm trying to like either educate people on how to better themselves, how to, uh, help them help their businesses do better, um, strategies and things like that, tactics around certain things, I want to educate them. And if I can't educate them, I want to try to bring some sort of entertainment or escapism, whether that's going on an adventure or coming out to see you or shooting guns or doing whatever. But if you're not doing that, you're just cre you're just adding to the noise on yeah, the internet. Absolutely. And you're just there. Yep, you're just trying to make a voice and be like, Don't, look at me. Right. Look at me. Nobody cares. Yeah, you know what I mean? So stick out. Um, I think that's really cool that you are like, I'm a marketer. But you're not a marketer in the sense of normal marketers. No, no, definitely not. And uh, I'd say the best way to uh, relate it to people. Go get him, Zary. Go get him. Go, go. <laughs> the best way to relate it to people would be uh, Super Bowl advertising, is uh -huh. what I would say. Because uh, if people uh, hear about the Super Bowl coming up, there's a few things that they really look forward to. Either, of course, the game or the commercials. That's it, man. And why the commercials? And uh, that's the thing is you know you're going to be pitched something, but you will... Are you have the expectation that you are going to be wowed, you are going to laugh, and you are going to remember it. Right. Because the next day on Monday, what is, what is there, if people aren't talking about the game, they're talking about the commercials. That's it. Or, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the Super Bowl commercial is probably the, still the, good, the only good use of like TV ad money. Yeah. No one else watches. You don't watch a commercial on anything else otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Al although I was, I've been, I was in a, in a TV commercial that's airing right now for Toyota. 
and like it's all I'm, I'm hearing it from everybody i go around and people are like oh i saw you in that toyota commercial <laughs> you know and it's like i'm like well apparently people still watch tv but i what i want to know is i don't know the cost to air those so I, i'm really curious to know the cost to air that commercial that everyone's seeing and talking about because if it's super cheap it might be worth exploring because mm -hmm. apparently people are watching because I'm getting told about it all day, every day. Oh, so it's and, really interesting. And there it is. It's impressions, and it's obviously, you know, there are... Impressions is huge. Yeah, it's, it's massive. It's huge. Um, I want to back up a little bit, because I feel like we jumped ahead, because I just went straight into it. I want to tell the audience a little bit about how you got to where you are now, because uh, I want to prove a point of how much work and effort it takes to get there. Yeah, because, I mean... Everybody wants to be an influencer. Everybody sees what I do, and a lot of people are just like, wow, you have so much fun doing everything you do. It must be so great, so wonderful. That's the life I want to live. How can I do it? And, you know, this is looking at somebody who's, like, got 150 followers, and I'm just like, you got well, a lot, lot you long way to go. Exactly. And not, not to look not down to say, on that, because yeah, everybody yeah, starts exactly. from, like, we all had 150 followers oh, yeah, once. Yeah, exactly. But you were also, like, what people don't realize and know about you is, is like, your background in the knocking door to door, which is where a lot of where you have picked up and learned your sales tactics of, of humor versus trying to be, like, the pushy sales guy, spammy, like, you're bringing humor into it, just like you do in your videos and your other content. But then, like you said, in... We're filming a documentary right now about Vaughn, so I've learned a lot about him recently. But like li living in your parents' basement till you were twenty-seven, yeah, you know, people, yeah, I was, it wasn't, I was that guy, man. You and know I, what I mean? And a lot like, of people, a lot of people give up on themselves so so early, and they stay late in the game. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm I should have got on this when I was twenty-two in order to build this. By then, no, I had nothing when I was twenty-seven years old. I had nothing in my savings account, literally. I had a, a, a an RX-8, Mazda RX-8, that right. I was like, yeah, man, I'm so cool. <laughs> Living in my parents' basement, driving yeah. this RX-8. Playing video games. <laughs> yeah, video games, man. That that was me, man. I was, I was like, yeah, I always like guns in that aspect, but I was literally not doing anything with my life, but I would knock door to door um, for six months out of the year. I would uh, go home, live in my parents' basement, you know, attempt to go to college, play video games, and then uh, when it came back around, I would go right back out and sell and knock doors. Right. So he came from that to kind of playing on Instagram because he was over Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then you start to build an audience. You know, he cre so the thing he didn't like about Facebook, maybe you should explain this, is that you just didn't like people's status updates. of like, oh, I had a bad day and the today sucks. And it's just a bunch of negativity. You're like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. So your wife introduces you to Instagram and she's like, well, why don't you check out Instagram because you can just follow pages of stuff you want to see. You don't yeah. have to see everyone's negative crap. Yeah, and it wasn't comments. It was just pictures. Right. You know, and uh, that, that appealed to me because I, I literally was just so sick of even even back then I was sick of just the social media, just hearing the drama and everything. And I was like, I'm done with Facebook. And this is early. How long ago was this? Yeah, this was. Do you have any uh, idea what year that was? Yeah, that was I was uh, 28 or 29 because I met my wife when I was 28. And yeah, I think I was 29. Six, seven years, six yeah. years ago, seven uh -huh. years ago. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, six years ago. And uh, literally, my wife opened up an Instagram for me. I created a page. And uh, then I just started posting stuff that I liked, which was guns, trucks, uh, off roading, mountains. And so he wanted to create a destination on Instagram and a feed on Instagram that was like, a digital man cave. Yeah, yeah, which, and then and then I got made fun of posting that stuff, and I was like, "Screw this! I'm going to make another Instagram page, and that's going to be for my hobbies. That's going to be what I want, and maybe I'll make a few friends doing this, but it's just going to be for me, and I don't care." And then that's when I literally started po po posting my stuff on it, and I was like, "How can I make this a man place, a man corner?" And then I was like, "Oh, the man spot, cool. Yeah. This is going to be a spot where men can come and just see cool, cool hobbies, stuff. be proud of it, and you know, create a little community of like-minded individuals." Which was a little bit unique then, because again, back then it was like pictures of food and crap mm -hmm. like that. And you say people were making fun of you, and that's because they thought you were trying to flaunt things or show off or whatever. And what mm -hmm. was that's? Yeah, they're like, like, "You oh. like to show off," and I was like, "No, these are just my hobbies. This is these are the things I work hard for, and I'd like to uh, attract like-minded individuals." Right. Right. Which is a little bit of adversity then. A lot of people would, would shy away from that and kind of stop doing it. And you're like, no, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> like, which yeah. is, but I, I want to prove a point here that like, if you just put your head down and you continue to do what you love and the things that you want to do for you and for no one else, and you just keep doing it, eventually it comes around. Yeah. To oh. sub, to, and everyone comes to you. 
Yeah, you know, so many exactly. people give up and fail early on because they're not getting what they want out of it or somebody's shaming them or making fun of them or being negative about it and they like don't do it or the people are judging them you know what i mean and they're people oh, yeah. they just yeah. get turned off by it they're they're embarrassed by it they don't want to do it anymore but you're like no this is what i want i'm going to do what i want to do for me because this is this is what i want to see same thing with tactical baby gear i knew that there was other people like me out there i knew it mm -hmm. and of course and i still get flack for it from people that are like oh sexism and this and that and fra fragile masculinity and i'm like screw you bro yeah, dude, like, like but like the controversy a lot of times is what stirs up um engagement it stirs up it gets it gets reach it gets recognized people see that so there's a fine line to walk i think with stirring up things too but um no, i think it, i think it's good though because it really shows the community that you've developed the community that you've created because people come to your defense and they're like no this is why I like it. Right. Go, if you don't like it, you don't have to say anything. Go somewhere else. Go to Target, get whatever you want. But to get your brand, it's just right. like, this is us. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, and you always find like minded individuals, like you said, and you were trying to create that page. Like, I'm trying to find other people that are into the same thing I'm into. And then that, so that grows, right? Let's, we'll, we'll move the story forward. That grows um, and it turns into what it is now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I threw, uh, and then I, I, I went to Texas and I started working there. And then when I was in Texas, I really started getting deeper into American history, the Alamo, that type of stuff. And I was like, well, since I have this Instagram page, I'm going to start posting about American history the way it used to be. Be proud of your country, guns, freedom. And I never served in the military. So I was like, listen, I didn't serve, but I'm still proud of my country. I'm a patriot. Yeah, I can and, do my part. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that resonated with so many people. I mean, there's a huge community out there of people who never served in the military. It's like you. You're a patriot. You love your Hardcore. country. Hardcore. Yep. And uh, yeah, we get flack for it. But at the same time, there's at the other half of the military is like, no, we, we love the fact that you love your country because that's well, what they're we're fighting, fighting for us. Yeah. You're fighting for our... For what we're fighting for, we want to know there are people like you right. that stand behind our country and us. Right. So, and that that just went that went big. And then when I started making videos, fifteen second videos on Instagram back then, because it used to be no videos. Right. And then they made fifteen second videos. And when I started making those, I'd have a whole storyline in fifteen seconds, and uh, that's what really started taking off. And people were like, "Wow, this is great!" And my uh, every time I would post a video, I would get like three thousand new followers. You know, just from that, because the algorithm was different. Well, and there wasn't really such an algorithm uh -uh. on Instagram. No, it was just like it, you saw everyone you followed, you saw all their stuff. Yeah, like in a chronolo chronological order, you know, so it was like if they posted it two minutes ago, you were seeing that they posted it two minutes ago. And then if they posted again five minutes after that, you saw that one, too. Yep, like exactly. you saw everything everyone posted that you followed. Yep. Uh, and then... So you didn't really, what's really interesting, and I will, I'll get deeper into algorithm stuff here in a little bit and hopefully share some tactics with you guys uh, from my point of view and from Vaughn's point of view, but like, it's really interesting uh, for some of us who have started so early on when there wasn't really the algorithm to play towards and you just were able to post content and focus on trying to build an audience through different tactics without really worrying about the algorithm. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, a lot of those days were shout outs and getting, you know, engaging content to get oh, yeah. people to comment and tag their friends. And, and like, you got to see this video. Out. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah, when people would shout out. Shout outs, like all that stuff made a huge difference that isn't as effective now because you're fighting the algorithm. Um, how have you seen... So much has changed. I don't even know where to start because so much has changed. You know what I mean? It's like because oh, yeah. it went from like fifteen second well, videos well, to, the, 30 to thirty seconds, seconds and, then, and then, it went, a minute. then it got sold to Facebook. Instagram got sold to Facebook, and then that's when the whole world changed for Instagram. Right, and that's in essence when the algorithm started to just plague it because now you got to play play with it. And a lot of people out there who are listening to this, you might not even be like algorithm. Like I've heard whispers of this algorithm or whatnot, but it it's very real and it's something you have to cater to. Otherwise, you won't get the views, you won't get the likes, and you have to pay attention to it. And you really have to pay attention to it in order for it to continue. Right, to and you have to play. Here's what here's what kills me. Here's what gets me about the whole algorithm talking all that stuff is so many people get so pissed off that Instagram and Facebook they're out to get me and they don't want it. And like, there's a re there's unfortunately a reason behind it, and it comes down to revenue for f Facebook and yeah. Instagram and how they get ad money and all these things. But it's a free platform for you to be on and use, uh, but and you can still use it to your advantage. Like you're still having success, you're still seeing growth, you're playing to the algorithm. 
uh, but it just pisses me off that people are like it's not the way it used to be. Like, yeah, no shit, things yeah. change. Yeah, exactly. Like you adapt and you overcome. Uh, exactly. You don't bitch. Yeah, you just like put in the work, figure it out, test things, yeah, try exactly. things. Exactly. Because there's still so many people on there that just will just gossip and be like, I'm shadow banned, and uh, you know, turn on your p post notifications and this right. and that. And it's just like. Okay. It's, it's a cop out. Every yeah, because they don't want to put in the work. They don't want to go and comment and reply to yeah. people's comments. The, here's what pisses me off the most: are the people that are like, "I'm too good for my audience. I don't care. I don't reply to any comments. I don't care what their comments are." Like, dude, I know somebody that was here not too long ago, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers, and he's like, "I don't give a fuck about my audience." And I'm like, "What?" I was pissed. Bread and butter, it's dude. Bread and I was butter, like, they. Bro. That audience is what's allowing you to do what you want to do and be an influencer and you don't care about them? Yeah. Like what? Like they are they are your 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 people. That's what's providing you an income to be able to live and you don't care about them. Oh, so pissed, dude. Yeah. Because you and I put so much effort into oh, our community everything. and our yeah. audience and communicating with them, I, engaging I, I with them. I still meet people at the bars occasionally when I can. Replying to, get a beer, to comments, you know? DMs, all the things. And here's people that, and then there's people that are just like, oh, I'm too good for that. They don't even have a big audience. But like, if you can't even cater to your small audience, what are you going to do with a big audience? Oh, yeah. You're screwed. Exactly. You're just setting yourself up for, you're not going to get a big audience. And your, your growth will die. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of growth, when did you see your biggest growth? Was there a was there a singular moment or has it just been this like steady slope? Um, did you have was there a moment where you went from like that sixty thousand to like two hundred thousand like it, rapidly? So I had a hundred thousand I had a hundred thousand on uh gosh, what was that? My I wanna say my thirty second birthday. Okay. And okay. then yeah, then the next year I gained two hundred thousand followers in a year. In a year. Yeah. And but I, there wasn't like a single moment. There wasn't like one video that just like catapulted. It was like you saw some big growth over a year and then it kind of slowed down a little bit. Yeah, it was like big growth, big growth. I mean, I I, uh, I think I did one video where uh, actually, yes, it just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the first, uh, the first Dick video. Dick the archives. Yeah, exactly. In my mind. That first video I did where um, hunting ISIS. Oh, yeah. With my baby. Yeah, that that went so viral, and so many people posted it everywhere. I mean, it, it ended up on the Chive. It ended up, you know, um, uh, Nine Line Apparel posted mm -hmm. it, and they they had a big following back then. They posted it on Facebook, their Instagram. I didn't even know who they were at the time. Right. So uh, a grunt style uh, Ma American badass, like all these, so many different companies. I want to say over fifty companies reposted the video that had over hundred thousand views. So that's where I really got a big name for myself because it was me involving my boy, my wife, and just husband shenanigans with his kid. And then we go to the pool and I'm carrying a battle ax. My wife has an AR-15 and, you know, yeah, and my little, little kid baby. has, yeah, yeah. And we're just rocking it, man. I, and uh, people just love that Americana. Right. So that was the one moment that really stuck out. And I was just like, wow, that is what the people want. Right. And I, from, from that one video, I got over 80,000 new uh followers, followers just from that that's crazy yeah that's crazy um so let me think through here uh so so there there was a, a moment that put you on um but you kept continuing to do the same thing yeah and, and here's what's really funny you probably didn't know that was going to go viral like the no, biggest thing about no and, and like you just had a, a recent moment where uh, you did another video that's gone crazy viral it's like 12 million views on facebook now yep. And hundreds of thousands on Instagram, and I don't know what it's done on YouTube. I haven't even looked, but I'm sure you know. But you know, a combined probably 13 million views or something ridiculous. Very safe to say, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just bonkers. But you probably had no idea. And like, and that's the thing. I kind of want to. Another point I want to make is you just never know when it's going to happen. And I do stuff all the time, and I'm like, it. it just keep posting. Mm -hmm. Keep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you doing. Have to breast do. practices. Find do some research. Get YouTube. Like, what are people saying are good practices for the algorithm this month? Is it use a bunch of hashtags? Is it don't use a bunch of hashtags? Is it video? Is it IGTV? Is it uh, you know know when the best time to post is for you? Do things that are going to get you engagement. Replying to comments. These are all things that help the algorithm. But you never like if you just keep posting. You just keep posting. It only takes one post. 
takes one post to really change the course of how your channel or what you're trying to accomplish or, or your message or yeah. any of that stuff, one post. Yep. It only takes one post for Post Malone to be like the biggest name out there currently. It only takes one post for the man spot to like get millions and millions and millions of views and 80,000 new followers. It only took one post for Tactical Baby Gear to be seen by so many people that really help. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. but people are like, well, I'll make a post a week. and but I'm, But their expectations and their ambition is so much more than that. Like, Listen, one like social media drives the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. It drive. That's why and people you have, like I, you have a job. So you keep on. You feed the beast. And right. I also say you got to feed the followers. Yeah. Cause I because now I'm even going to these different conferences and stuff, and I teach about social media. I teach about content creation. And the biggest thing I tell people is you just have to continue creating content no matter what. Because you'll score a home run. Like I, I made that video and it's just like, yes, yes. And it's just but like, you can't slow down. No, it's just like, awesome. Now you have that and, many more and, eyeballs. Yep. And it goes right back to my, my, my sales. It was like, cool. You're only as good today as, as you your, were yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's a brand new day and you're at zero today. So you just have to keep on going. You have to keep on grinding. And if you don't, you know. People are going to forget about that video you just did, and they're going to see what you're recently coming out with. Right. So it's being relevant for sure. And people are hungry for content. Like they're scroll, like they're they're scrolling through multiple different platforms many many times a day mm -hmm. at 100 miles an hour. And like the game that you and I have to play, and and everyone has to play, not just me and you, but is is how do you stop them from scrolling? How do you get them to stop and watch and read that post and yeah, look at that picture exactly. and, and watch five seconds? Not even it's like. They'll see two seconds of the video, but they're scrolling through at the same time. How do you get them to watch five seconds and hook them then yeah. to get them to watch the rest of the minute or that, two minutes or five minutes? And I didn't think uh, my last video that got millions of over 10 million views was going to get that much because it was five minutes long. Five minutes. That's like a vlog almost. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. So like when we met, it, I was like, this is just going to be funny, man. It's going to be great because we, there were so many guns in the video going through and naming this, that, that, that. I was like, eh, we might lose some people in this. We might lose them. No, people yeah. just wanted to see what else was going to come out of the boxes or my hands <laughs> or the truck, you yeah. know, so it was just that anticipation. And it was probably also timing, too, because, I mean, me, I always post my videos uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, that's kind of my, my time. Sure. There has been a time where I've switched it up a little bit, like Tuesdays, and it's done extremely well. And we're like, well, is it because we're not doing our norm? And maybe. You know, you just have to continue trying new things. Yeah. And you can't get frustrated because we, we've put more effort into some videos where I went and rented some uh, Amigos at Home Depot. <laughs> get them in the van. Those are my extras, man. Yeah. So I'll get them. I will spend over $1,000 on a video. And I'm like, oh, this is going to go so viral. I am so excited for this video. This is the funniest video I've ever made. 30,000 views. And it just tanks. Yeah. It and, happens and to me for, all Yeah, and the for time. me, that's that's terrible. 30,000 yeah. views. I'm like, let me crawl in a hole and, and die. You're right. But you get back up uh -huh. and you're like, all right, we got to do another yeah. one. And, th and then it's funny because then we'll spend an hour making a video and it will get hundreds of thousands of views. And I'm just like, what the f like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's like you can't overthink it. Like there's good ideas. There's things that you like you just get romantic about. Like we just did this video for Tactical Baby Gear that's like this. It's got a strong message and it's not really meant or formatted to be a viral video by any means because it doesn't have that but hook in for, the first few seconds. For me, I knew exactly what it was. Like dad life, imagination, yeah. like kid, what they're thinking. Right. Yeah, I thought it was brilliantly done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the concept, and I th thank you for that. I appreciate that. The concept behind it, the execution behind it, I think is is perfect. But it's not meant to be a viral video to go out and get millions and millions of views overnight. It was more of a strong message that uh, is going to live on the website. That's going to mm -hmm. be like, this is who we are. It's this like is what your, we're it's about. Like one of your signatures, right? This is like, this is what you're signing up for with Tactical Baby mm -hmm. Gear. Be the hero your kids think you are. Like, yeah. man up. Be a dad. Show them how to show them what's up. You know what I mean. So it was meant to be more of a, a brand message than a viral video, um, but it still like kind of hurts. And I tell people not to worry about like vanity metrics, like especially early on. Like don't worry about how many followers you have. Just do what you can do. Oh yeah. Just pay I'm, attention I mean, to what you want to do. There's people now. And keep doing it, yeah. and you'll build an audience based off of what you're doing, not trying to be something you're not. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's people out there who don't even have fifty thousand followers who uh, their engagement is better than mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, whoo, they, that, and that's a it's strong impressive. community. Yeah, and that, I, I, I used to have that, and then it just kind of stretches out the bigger you get. Of course. But I mean, if you can create 
that community that you've built of like-minded individuals and you hang on to that, retain it, and you don't change yourself from what you were then with your community, oh, you, you will, you will, you'll build a stronger tribe than anybody out right. there. And I have that problem on my Beave Brody Instagram page because it, it's gone from like cars and gun stuff when I was building cars and it was like all cars and fab mm -hmm. stuff and welding and you know, we were shooting guns a lot and, and all that kind of stuff. And then it, I, I got out of that business and got more into tactical baby gear and like I slowed down on car stuff. It was less car stuff. And then it was like, and then it's just kind of like me. It's just like, hey, here's what I'm up to. It's like a personal page. I don't really treat like a business because it used to be a business the thing for me because mm -hmm. it was cars. It was all my life. I remember life. When, like I, when I first started following you, I was like, oh, Beeb's a big car guy. Shit, right. this guy yeah. out. Okay. So, but like that's what all my initial followers are there for car stuff. Yeah. And then I phased out of that. And as I got deeper and deeper into e-commerce and marketing and Facebook ads and all this different stuff and educating people around that, they were less interested in that. So my, I, I almost ought to start a new page that's like just like the Beef Brody brand, just, like yeah. has nothing to do with the car stuff. That's more of like education around business and marketing and all that stuff. I just never taken that. Like I've never taken my personal brand very serious and I just want to help people. And it's not like I don't make money off of it. I don't need to make money off yeah. of it. I don't want to make money off of it. I just want to help give back to the people. Well, I think your head is in the right place because I mean then anything be beyond that, then it, that's a whole other episode on just talking about transitioning mm -hmm. your your page or your identity or your brand. Yeah. But you're, you got your, your head's in the right place. Yeah, you know, sure. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, um, you know, and there's times where I try, I kind of pander to things and I'm like, God, nope, I got to stay in my lane. This is what I'm doing because it's like you see what other people are doing or, you know, you try to – and a lot of it's just trying. it. Like you get inspired by someone else and you're like, man, they're, I love this format of this or that. And you're like get inspired by that and you kind of go to – and you're like, nah, it's not really me. And you kind of go back to your mm -hmm. lane. You know how it is. Oh, you're yeah, absolutely. Like, but but a lot of it's just trying new things like hey let's try this and see how it works let's try that and I use my personal page a lot to experiment before I implement it on tactical baby gear which is smart you know what I mean yeah. so it's like I've got this small page with enough of an audience to gauge if something's gonna work or not and then I put it on you know if mm -hmm. if it's like this was a good idea let's put that through tactical baby gear format so would you, know? you consider yourself more of a uh, influencer no hell no personally I don't I just want to be an influence like on people, I, want, I, I don't want to say influence. I mean, I, I do, but I wouldn't consider myself an influencer yeah. by any means, but I want to uh, encourage and inspire people, you know, to, yeah. to chase their dreams and well, do. I think it's, it's genuine, you of know, course, dude. Yeah, which is great. Like, it's do great, you know how guilty I feel at times that I've got it so good? Like knowing that other people, all they have, like they've got good ideas. They've got like, oh, they stole my idea. Like, if you actually put in the work towards this good idea that you had or someone that stole your idea, had you actually put in the work, you'd be in a good place. But so many people are just lazy about it and they want to complain about things. Instead of complaining about it, they should be out doing something oh, about yeah. it. Or there's the people but like, that I feel so guilty that I have it so good because I put in the work. I just want people to be able to like just know that if they put in the work and keep their head down and keep going and doing what they want to do, that what makes them happy, it'll come around to them and they'll be in a good place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's all. I just want to. I just want to encourage the people listening that are just complaining and in a rut and in a bad place. That instead of doing something, they're at home playing video games. Like, get off your ass. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that was me. That was me. Like, I literally had myself convinced when I was like 25 to 27. Like, I'm in hibernation mode. Uh, I, the beast is going to awake. Like right. that. That was in me. Like the beast is going to awake, and it did. It did awake. But. What were the chances and likelihood of that ever happening? I could have easily have just procrastinated mm -hmm. it, never done anything, and then before you know it, I'm dead. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know but, but here's what's cool, though. is like even at 27, when you felt like you were like almost too late to get started, potentially, and a lot of people do, they're like, there's so much time. Oh, there really is, man. You know what I mean? Like, people, people don't understand that. There is so I, much time to get done. I was speaking at an event in Chicago um, a month or two ago, and I was talking to this kid and he's like, he's like in this rut and he's trying to figure out how to do drop shipping and he's just trying to make a quick buck. And I'm like, dude, you don't even love what you're doing. And, and then all this stuff. And he's like, I'm like, what do you love doing? He's like, man, I like, you know, going to the gym and working out. I'm like, start a YouTube channel about working out and stuff, you know, and he's trying to like drop ship like random crap off of Etsy or, or Alibaba or whatever. And th then I get through this thing and I'm like, you know, this kid seems awfully, I'm like, how old are you? He's like, man, I'm 18. I'm like, bro. You are worrying about yeah. the wrong crap right now. Yeah. The wrong crap, you know? And uh, there's a whole vlog. And you guys, I'll 
maybe some of you guys have seen it. I actually, I, I would encourage you guys to look for the Shopify, the Chicago meetup vlog, um, because it's all in there. And I think you guys get a lot of value out of what I said to this kid. But anyways. Um, and he took the time to say that. A lot of people wouldn't take the time to say that to an 18-year-old. So. Dude. Kudos. I mean, I Kudos talked to this kid for a while. And, and I just, I included it because I was like, P more people need to hear this. Yeah. More people need to hear it. But Absolutely. Um, so back to uh, the topic of the man spots. Uh, um, there's a lot. So as an influencer, do you spend a lot of time um, contemplating companies that you work with and stuff to, so that you can stay on on brand for you because I know that you get hit up from yeah. every direction from oh, yeah. all walks of life what uh, what does that process look like for you and so the process has obviously changed <clears throat> a lot but I get hit up from um, I would say probably probably roughly 20 companies a week will hit me up and X Y and Z sometimes it's more sometimes it's less but I would say about a rough average is 20 and uh, but now a big thing you have to know your worth and because uh, at the be very beginning, I didn't really know my worth and what I was doing for a lot of these companies, and it made them a lot of money. So um, uh, with that, I do go through a process of would I legitimately buy this product if I was not an influencer? If I, just normal me, would I go out and buy this? Would I be able to use it? Is it worth my money? Is it worth the durability I do? So there's a lot of companies out there. I'm like, cool, yeah, send me your product. No promises. Um, I can tell people about my experience with it, or I can tell you my experience about it first. So there is a huge testing that I go through to uh, uh, just make sure I'm not pushing something I wouldn't want. Because I have made a mistake in the past of pushing products that I'm just like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, such, such as like a, an ammo company, for mm -hmm. example. There was an ammo company that came out, and uh, they're just like, hey, we want you to push our ammo. And I was just like, mm. but I, I threw out a big price, which was big for me. Um, it was like, um, should, should I drop numbers on here? If you want to, <laughs> I think you know. I think it'll be interesting for a lot of the audience to understand kind of like what it costs for. I mean, and everyone has their own price, mm -hmm. but uh, I think there's you know because it can range. Like you could pay someone fifty bucks for a post. You could pay someone thousands of dollars. There's people like the Jenners who are getting millions of dollars. Yeah. But like, yeah. it's so it ranges. But somebody in the ballpark of like, you can drop numbers if you want. You can. That's up to you. But. Um, yeah, I'll just drop this and because it, it was a couple years ago. So, but this company sent me some ammo. I shot it. I was like, yeah, it's okay. But I was working on a bigger ammo deal with a bigger company. But I, I knew that wouldn't happen for a while. So with this company, I was just like, sure, uh, I'll make a video for four thousand dollars. And I was literally like, yeah, they're not gonna pay that. Yeah, they, they were like, cool, okay, no problem. And I was just like, oh my gosh, okay, all right, we're doing this. So I literally uh, made the video. Great video. It sent them. They weren't ready for the the amount of audience that they got to them. Their website shut down. Um, then they started bringing it back. And then they got so many people coming to the website, but the clicks weren't happening. And I'm like, I'm doing my job. I'm bringing people to you. Don't talk to me about what you should do about your website because I'm doing my job by bringing an audience to you. Right, right, right. And then, of course, per post, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I think uh, for a good solid post, it was like two grand per post. Mm -hmm. And again, that was just one of those, yeah, if you're serious, you're going to pay it. But if not, it doesn't matter to me because I have, I already have enough on my plate and you guys aren't my priority. But when they came, when they were paying that, I was just like, okay, like I'm going to take this very serious and uh, do what I need to. But the, uh, be, I don't know what it was about their business because they were new. They didn't have experience with all these rounds, but I would get it sent, you know, a thousand rounds and the, the, I'd get the lead and it would be missing right off of the brass. Oh no. And, and you would hear the gunpowder in the case dripping out and I would just be like, are you, are you guys kidding me? Like, if I'm getting my stuff like this, what is my audience getting right. like this? Because you... Go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to... No, interrupt. no, no, you're fine. Well, I was going to say, you, you treat a lot of these companies that you work with as a partner, like as it's your own. You want... Mm -hmm. Because you don't want your... Your audience are your customers, essentially. Yeah, exactly. You know? They and, trust me. They trust right. that I've done my work, my homework, and they're like, he has never let me down with anything he's pushed, and he won't. Right. And as soon as you get, you get an experience like that, you're like, oh my God, what's my audience getting? Yeah. Are they going to be pissed at me? Yeah, Did they just waste their money and oh, it's my exactly. fault? Exactly. And I had a lot of people that are like, hey, you know, X, Y, and Z, customer service, this, that. And I would be like, guys, what is going on with that? So I would literally, I was in essence also customer service for the people that would get in touch with me because I would reach out and I'd be like, take care of this customer. Here's their email. Here's their info. Taking care of them. Get them more ammo. Get them the right stuff that they paid for, they expected. And it was it was a horrible experience for me, but again, it was a learning experience that I had to learn. Everything's learning, exactly. Dude, never, and you learn stuff every day. Like I never stop learning, and like education is king, man. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, 
the you know so what's really interesting about that and I used to do and I still do a lot of consulting for other businesses and that's the biggest thing that I look at when they're like hey can you help us run Facebook ads I'm like I can get you all the traffic you want according to your budget like like how what's your budget how much traffic can we get you with that budget but then I I early on I had to learn this the hard way because I, we had a lot of things set up right but other people. I started looking and digging, and, and the first few times I helped some people get some Facebook ads running, and they're like, yeah, we're spending all this money, but nothing's working. And I'm like, how's it not working? Like, I'm sending so much traffic. But then you start looking at the rest of it, and it's a mess. Like, the website's jacked. The checkout Hard page is all screwed up. Half the stuff's not in stock. They don't have any Colors photos. Yeah. Like, whatever the case is. And I'm like, well, no wonder you're not selling. You guys have to finish the rest of this process. Yeah. Like, I can yeah, send it's traffic. Huge so it's, you know, it's the entire funnel. It's the whole puzzle. Like, do you have all the pieces of the puzzle in the right place? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, if you just have the border or whatever, like, it's not, go you don't, you can't see the puzzle. You can't see the picture. So you got to have all the pieces. So it's like, I can send you traffic, but, you know, and I don't know how much of your due diligence you do now. And I'd be kind of curious to hear, like, do you go through their website and their checkout and, and all the other things to make sure that when you pump uh, traffic to their website or to their Instagram page, are they able to convert those customers the way they want so that you can show that your show your worth? You so, know, yeah. So I do uh, my due diligence, but not as extreme because I, I now have a. Uh, a manager that helps me with that, right. who helps schedule my events. And if people go to him, he'll filter through a lot of messages now. Like I have my email, which somehow people get my email that I'll go through. I don't have any idea how many air, uh, my guy Aaron goes through. And uh, from what he tells me, he just gets messages like crazy. Like he's even said, you should get your marriage license to marry people. And you could start literally making some money to <laughs> weddings. That. Yeah, That's but so uh, funny. but yeah. So now he does his the due diligence, the websites, and everything because he's also a website guru, kind of like you with right. Spotify, Facebook ads, and all of that. So he does the due diligence, and I'm like, if it fits the brand, come to me with these, and he'll he'll pitch me maybe like four a week, and I will say no to three, right? And uh, maybe one will make it, and then I'm like, okay, now come up with the terms. So it's a huge negotiation process, and uh, right now we just don't even mess around with, and and, and I feel bad. Uh, sometimes because there are some good small companies coming up, but they just don't have the money right. to do it. But again, at the same time, I won't sell myself short because my time is so valuable, valuable now. right now with yeah. family and everything that I have going on. Right. Yeah, man. I don't think, I think people underestimate how much more of the puzzle they have to have in place for things like influencers to even work. Like if you were listening and you were contemplating using influencer marketing, it's a good idea, but you have to have the rest of it in place. And you have to have a plan. And, uh, and, and you need to, I think it's setting levels of expectation ahead of time. Like you might say like, listen, do you want more followers? Do you want more sales? Do you like, what do you want? Yeah, what do you want out of this? You know what I mean? And like, if you want more sales, you need to know that if, if he's pushing traffic to your website or any influencer, not just him, but like if any influencer is pushing, pushing traffic to your website, uh, that you have a good system in place and a good, uh, website that your funnel on the website you've done your homework on you know how to convert your customers yeah uh, and if that's and if, if that's more followers that you know how to convert your followers into customers exactly um, and uh, also about you know I'll go off just about influencers too and kind of what I talk about when I go to some of these conferences is uh, if you want to be a brand you want to be an influencer what you have to do is you have to figure out what your recipe is for your brand or you as an influencer and uh, like my recipe specifically is my family, patriotism, guns, shenanigans, um, adventures, history. And uh, I, I mix that all within my platform. And, I, and that's, my, that's my formula. And it's just like a cake. If you don't have the butter in there or something, it's not going to yeah, be as sweet. Yeah, the recipe is exactly. So you gotta you gotta stick to that recipe, and maybe you branch out a little bit and add some M mm -hmm. and M's. You know, with my yeah, cars, yeah, little cars Oreos. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. You, so you can add to it continually. But the fact of the matter is you just have to stick with that and then your community is going to follow that recipe because they like that cake. They like how it tastes. That's and a Publix cake right yeah, there. Exactly. Boom. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, that's, that, that, and that's what I tell companies. I was like, you have to fig figure out your niche. You have to figure out what it is. And, uh, and then some people were like, well, I need more or this or that. And then that's where I've also started my own little consulting company where I'm like, okay, this is something where I have to talk to you on the weekly about where we're going with your brand and what we're doing. And if it is or isn't working, or if you're doing something that you, you know, cause a lot of people don't have that creative eye. They have the determination. They're uh, the inventor, but they're not the marketer. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference between that. And it's good that people hire or get the help that they need to get where they're at. Cause the, 
you know, I'm, I'm not really an inventor, but you know, of course I'm a creator. Right. So w- when the inventor comes to me, I'm like, boom, let's get this. Get some ideas flowing. There. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Um, so speaking of the recipe that you use for your page, do you, do you follow, um, any particular format in, have you, I guess we've already answered that, you know, you're, you're talking about like, do you have a, f- a recipe of like creating a viral video or is it just again, like we just never know what's going to yeah. go viral. Uh, like, yeah. You really never know what's going to go viral. Like, uh, I just posted a video today, which, uh, I would, I would say it's on its, it's on its path to going viral. Mm-hmm. Let's check this out. So this is one that I did, uh, just about belt fed and it just shows a belt fed link and it shows egg bacon and coffee on it. So it's been up for six hours and it has 112,000 uh, views. So that's, that's doing yeah. decent, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty no, good. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. And, well, what's interesting and, is how, how much organic has fallen off because that video a year ago would have probably have a lot more than that. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So like organic has died. So what does that mean for influencers? What does that mean for a brand? I can tell you what it means for me as a brand that that means we're spending more money on Facebook ads. That means mm-hmm. we're spending more money to be in front of people uh, and we're going to, you know, continue to, to outspend our competition and, you know, things like that. But like, it just means as a brand, if you're listening, you have to set aside a budget for social media marketing and well, that's yeah, ad spend really budget. That's influencer budget. That's, you know, a bunch of different things, but you mm-hmm. know, I spend a lot of money and I've told you guys before my top of funnel strategy is spending money for engagement and that's taking like a regular Instagram or Facebook post and putting money behind it to a lookalike audience of people who have purchased to let's say 6 million people and getting more people to engage with the content Mm -hmm. uh, that that just funnels them down through and they start getting the rest of the ads. Oh, exactly. And uh, a lot of people don't know this just about that. uh, It's crazy to me how many companies still don't take social media seriously. Dude. Because I mean, I've, I've, I was like a, one of the frontier men of the gun influencers. community, uh, gun community oh, yeah. influencers. So when I would go to, you know, SHOT Show and I'd go to the NRA shows, I'd meet with a lot of these different companies, old school companies that have been around for, you know, more than 70 years. And they just put their uh, marketing money into magazines, 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 magazines. But now that they've seen Facebook cuts all guns out of everything, they're like, okay. And now magazines are dying. They have all this marketing money and they're like, well, what? where's the marketing going? Where do we need to spend our dollars? And a lot of- Yeah, where are people's pe- attention? Yeah, a lot of younger people are like, oh, you got to do social media. And they're like, huh? Wait, what is that? Who? Is this a joke? Facebook? Yeah, I've heard of it. Instagram? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and, you know, it throws them for a loop. Yeah. So it's taken them- So I've, I've literally- done so many follow-up meetings with these companies but now when i show them my impressions i show them what i'm doing i'm like listen you can track my impressions and it will show you they are better than any magazine that you ever did because they can't tell you oh we we sold x amount of magazines but we don't know who flipped to your page and saw your ad right right and a lot of those metrics for magazines are like based on them sitting in a doctor's office and three people reading the same magazine stupid like exactly get get out of here with that crap Mm -hmm. get out of here with that so so when it comes to somebody deciding if they want to be an influencer it's awesome. It's great. But you have to realize you have to put yourself out there. Buddy. And there's no time off. Like, yeah. No. Zero. That's it. Zero. Yeah. And there's there's no, <laughs> I mean, I've made some, you know, I, I told you about those mistakes. But I mean, even if you make personal mistakes, you're putting your whole life out there. And yeah, I've made some personal mistakes and it's embarrassing as hell. And I tell my wife, you know, you get in a fight with your wife. It's forgotten about, you know, a few weeks later. Me? Oh no, it never dies. <laughs> <laughs> the internet does not forget. <laughs> they don't forget and they don't forgive. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. So speaking of uh, being an influencer, and like you said, there's no time off. Um, um, there was something I was going to ask, and I had a little note here about it. Um, but you kind of already covered that. No, oh, I mean, we could also go through just... Oh, uh, no, there was something. Shoot, it was on the tip of my tongue. There was on the tip of my tongue. I know, I'm thinking there's smoke coming out of my ears. Yeah. You guys, it's National Donut Day. I've had like several donuts. I'm all jacked up on sugar from donuts and coffee. And like, I'm trying to, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly. why I'm over here like fidgeting with this <laughs> bottle cap. And I'm like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back to uh, the, vid- the video today that I said, when yeah. we made that video, I told my guys, this will go viral. And uh, the reason for that, and I was like, I was like, there's not a storyline. There's not any like, Pure entertainment. Yep. I was just like, this is just going to be a simple belt fed coffee, bacon, eggs going into the gun. And that's when the guy just eats it. I was like, I've seen maybe a coffee on belt fed, but it was on pavement. It wasn't on a rocks. It wasn't so raw. Uh And I was like, 
this is going to go. Right. Because the only thing I say is I love Fridays. And at the very end, it's God bless America. So it's like, boom. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah. people who hate me could watch that and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. Um, do you have anything that you would like to share with the audience? Any uh, advice? Any um, uh, Anything like that? You know, I will say... Uh, being a uh, influencer, and especially if you're a very serious influencer, your mind it never turns off, never, and uh, you get burnt out pretty damn quick. Because if you're not creating content, you got to be answering messages. Not answering messages, you got to be engaging. You got to be creating a new picture, something new, something fresh, something nice, and then you got to think of your next video that you're gonna do. You got to schedule that. You got to, and then you. It, it's that's also involved in your personal life. So I got to make sure my wife has enough time, my kids have enough time, my dog has enough time. You know. So let's talk about that. That's the question I get all the time: is how how do you balance work life balance? Like how do you do that? And I I personally I suck at it. I suck really bad at work-life balance because I just love to work. And uh, there's times where my family suffers for that, but it is also because I love to work so much and I put in a lot of the effort, there's times where that allows me to just take eight or 10 days off and be with them, solely with them, not worrying about other things. Which is so um, great. I, so, love, I love when you go on vacation. But it's a, family, constant, it's a constant... I know like, how hard you've worked to do Yeah, that. well, it's just a constant... like struggle like and it's communication between me and my wife and she'll let me know at times like hey listen you just need to be like and i've done a much better job in the past like year of making sure that saturdays and sundays i'm not working i'm home with the kids and taking them to gymnastics or doing this or going on a on the boat or whatever the case is uh, more recently but before that when we we're still really trying to build this thing and like put the foundation on the ground it was just like sorry guys, I'm working. And like, it's all with good intent. Like mm -hmm. I'm not working and ignoring anybody to be malicious or mean, or I hate you or any of those things. Like I'm putting in the work now, so I don't have to later, you know? Um, and I struggle with that a lot, but she'll have to remind me. She'll have to give me a little nudge and be like, Hey, you need to be home. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I have a lot of questions from these guys. You guys sent me questions like a week ago that I said I'd answer on the podcast and I haven't done a podcast since you sent me those. This is the first time I've done a podcast. I'm not going to answer those. I'm going to have my wife on here. and We'll answer all those questions That's with smart. her. That's very smart. Yeah. You know. And she'll make me look real dumb. <laughs> <laughs> how well, do you... Wives have a good way of doing that. Yeah. How do you, how do you manage work-life balance? Uh, same thing. I had to designate weekends. I mean, the only way that I'll work Saturdays or Sundays is if I'm behind schedule. And I'm like, sorry, babe, I have to do this on the Saturday, but I have to do And I know you've made up for some of that too, uh, like on a Monday or something, you're traveling, you get back and you're like, all right, I've, I've, right, have you not, like I do the same thing. If I'm like traveling or I'm in Asia or I'm here or there in Utah with you guys or we're racing and like we get back on a Sunday night, I'll take like Monday off yeah, and just spend time yeah. with the kids and with and my wife, especially because like, you know, school year, she's at home, like I'll just spend the day with her and we'll go whatever. She wants to get pampered or like whatever the case is, go eat lunch and just spend time with her um and then get back to work on tuesday you do the same thing yeah yeah exactly like even with you guys you were like hey you want to fly back sunday and i was like saturday night that way i can spend the whole day with my family word for word he said it and He's then not making that up yeah and then i was like because i fly out monday again for another event so it's just like boom 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 and uh yeah it's uh, it's uh everybody has to be on board too so i literally have had to have the conversation with my wife like i need your support in doing this right. otherwise i can't do it and, uh, yeah, and then I also have to hit the uh, extra fuel tank when I do come home from work and stuff because I know my, my wife needs time to go and do They're things. demanding. And it's like, give me the kids. And it's like, I'm tired as heck. I got a lot to do. But it's like, you go get your time. Let me take do the kids. Thing, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely. It's uh, taking the shift. Yeah. Team effort. And even though I'm tired as hell, because sometimes they get the perception, oh, he's out having fun. He's, he's doing good. He's, he's living his life. It's like, yeah, I love what I do. You but, mean like yesterday when we were hanging out on a yacht drinking? Yeah. <laughs> that was work. <laughs> it was work. <laughs> I have to keep telling ourselves uh, yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, again, it goes back to find something you love to do. Like you love to work. You love to grind. I'm the same way. It's a challenge. It's new. But at the same time, you get worn out. But you just you got to keep on going. For sure. For sure. Um, any, any tactical advice for these guys with uh, in regards to um, creating content or... Uh, what they should be or should not be doing currently it's as so, of June it, 2019. Yeah, well, it's so easy to get frustrated, especially with the haters. One hater will ruin your entire day if you let it. And uh, I've had to grow very thick skin 
very thick skin because I it's, mean it's especially early on when you're not used to it. Like mm -hmm. it'll it can really yeah because you're gonna be like what did he say? Oh, I'm gonna scroll back and see what he said. Oh, blah, 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 blah. and then you just get into it and that it's toxic. Doesn't get anywhere? It's toxic. It it's doesn't. bad. It demotivates you to make the same post again in the future. Mm -hmm. It kills your creativity. So do not listen to trolls whatsoever. You know what I love Don't to do to trolls? It. I like to like their comments. Like, yeah, I see you, bitch. Like, <laughs> I just hit like. And then I and then I have a little laugh about it, and that's how I deal with it. Yeah. I don't care what yeah. they think. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I see you troll. And you know, a lot of times I'll just delete the comment. Like, listen, oh, yeah. I don't like this. You're not gonna come to my house and talk shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're in my living room. Like, delete. And yeah, and sometimes you know people will bring trash, and I'll just be like, "Whoa, bro, are you thirsty after that? Let me buy you a beer." <laughs> <laughs> so I've approached it in a way of like, "Dang, I've did, said some stuff like somebody I'll kill pray your for dog." You. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like stuff <laughs> like, like that. So, like their life is so life. bad that they can they 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 consumed your content. They probably laughed at it, and then they're gonna talk trash. Exactly. Like screw you. Yeah. Get yeah, out so, of here with that. So, I mean, I went through this huge blocking stage where it's just like if anybody liked even a bad, funny meme about me, I blocked the people that like that meme. Like, I went freaking crazy there for maybe like a month or two. And then thick skin grew, and I was like, okay, this isn't going anywhere. This is just something I have to adapt and live with. Yeah. And uh, and it was just my my way of growth. That's, so that's the negative side of being an, an influencer or, or even just being online in general. Like the problem with being online is that everyone has a voice, right? Oh, yeah. Everyone feels like they can put in their two cents. Negative, positive, doesn't matter. And that's great. And that's the world we live in. And that's America. You can say what you want. Mm -hmm. God bless America. We can yeah. literally we can say whatever we want, you know, more often than not. Yeah. Since okay. there's stupid Yeah. And there's stuff that algorithms. still comes up where I'm just like, dang, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, but to that point, though, like people are entitled to their opinion, but like, there's just a, a lack of respect. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I, uh, what was it, three weeks ago, I went out to Minnesota, rode tanks for a video game. So sick. Yeah, I'm was, so pissed it, I didn't get invited it, for that. <laughs> it was pretty freaking cool. <laughs> but I came all dressed up like I'm, you know, Dude, a part, a part I was of like, Kelly's Heroes. Yeah. You brought all that stuff with me. Yeah, I brought it all with me. Did, yeah. And they were like, you you have this? And I was like, hell oh, yeah. Man, you can <laughs> ride a tank. But, you know, I took some pictures, you know, with the tank, posted it, and then a meme page took it. And they wrote, like, almost served, like, oh. all this stuff. And I'm just like, well, I didn't almost provide for my family because that's what I was doing. I was marketing for a video game yeah. for this. And I was just like, I was dressed in World War II stuff. So so it's just, and I let that bug me for a little bit. But I was just like, it's Dude, just the hate man, that comes sucks. with what you do. If you if put you, yourself on a platform, you're putting yourself up as, as a target, mm -hmm. potentially. Yeah, yeah. People don't. So, so you guys just get ready for that because there's a lot of things you want to get prepared for. And Beav, it's awesome that he's doing this to actually give you kind of a forefront of uh, what to expect, what to expect, yeah. what to be there, and to see if it is or isn't for you. Because if you've got light skin, it's not for you. No, no, you got to get that thick skin. Yep. Vaughn, I love you, bro. Thank you for hey, being on here. Absolutely. Let them know where they can find you. Will do. Uh, Instagram, the man spot. I also have. Just man spot. I need to post on that one more. And then uh, Facebook is just uh, the man spot. Uh, YouTube, the man spot underscore or meet the spots is kind of where we have. Uh, we have over 70 vlogs on there. So something we've just been tentatively feeding. But hey, that's where I'm at. Or you can find me on Tactical Baby Gear. And he's got a, a website, too, where he sells some sweet swag and merch. I don't yeah. know what you got in stock right now, but hats, T-shirts, coffee mugs, yeah. um, the vests, man, jackets. The man spot USA dot com. 100% customer satisfaction. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, leave some comments below of things that you want to know about in the future. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.